Hello and welcome to a YouTube video that not too long ago I could not have imagined myself making. Um, I'm finding it hard even to find a, a good introduction to this. Uh, but what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to load cremated remains into a shotgun shell so that you can give uh, that one last farewell send off to the uh, the hunter, the outdoor enthusiast, the firearms enthusiast in your life. Uh, today we're going to be using 20 gauge brass shotgun shells, uh, but essentially the same information will apply to 12 gauge and other sizes, as well as kind of your more common uh, plastic shotgun shells. Uh, I think what we're going to do here is just do a little bit of an overview and then we're going to come on in to a close up on the exact process of doing this. Uh, a couple of caveats. First of all, of course, uh, anything firearms related can be uh, dangerous. So safety first. You definitely want to know what you're doing. Uh, you want to wear safety glasses while doing loading. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing this, please read up as much as you possibly can first on reloading in general. I found that some of the best information uh, about the brass shotgun shells uh, was in videos about cowboy action shooting. I also watched literally every video on YouTube about black powder reloading um, and hit a couple of forums uh, just talking about reloading in general, uh, getting some feedback from people. So I want to show you uh, exactly what I came up with. Uh, to start with, we're going to use some pretty basic tools. Um, I do not have a reloading setup. Um, after my father had passed away, uh, he did have some reloading materials. Uh, he was very much into muzzle loaders and black powder. So we did have, for example, uh, some artificial black powder. This is not true black powder. Uh, this is something called 777 made by Hodgdon. Um, you may have heard of something called Pyrodex. Essentially, it's a black powder replacement. So I think at this point, uh, we'll come in close and we'll show you the exact process for doing this. So we're going to be loading these brass shotgun shells. These are manufactured by Magtech. You get 25 of them in a case. Uh, you can reuse them very, very many times. Uh, they're very nice. And for something like a funeral send-off, um, I think they certainly uh, have some nicer qualities than a traditional shotgun shell, uh, especially since it makes a nice keepsake. After somebody fires one of these, they can keep that nice brass shell as a memory for forever. Uh, right here, we have the primers. The brass shells use a large pistol primer, unlike your typical shotgun shell, which uses a 209 primer. And I've got examples of each right here. As you can see, the 209 is a larger primer. Uh, it's bigger round and it's taller. Uh, and that large pistol primer, uh, it's, it's pretty small. It's just kind of a little button sort of a thing. Now, the very first thing we would need to do is if you have a shell uh, that has already been used, you have to take that old primer out. And an easy way to do that, you just put that over a socket you could also take, a, oh, maybe a piece of two by four, drill an appropriate size hole in it. And then we just need a punch, a nail, anything along those lines that's long enough that it can reach down through the shell uh, right into where that primer is. And then you just take a hammer and tap it out. Very straightforward. Just give that a few smacks and it'll pop right out. The real trick is look down in there and make sure you get that point lined up first. Uh, now this might look like it's bouncing around a lot because we're on a close up and I'm just on a temporary workbench here. And see how that goes through and that pops right out. Now for a brass shell, uh, these ones, when you get them new, they don't have a primer in there, so you don't have to worry about it. If you have used some of these, uh, yes, you'll have to pop that primer out. It is a little smaller, so just make sure that you have uh, an appropriate tool that can go through that small hole right at the bottom. So now, let's put this primer into the shell. 
There's certainly a, a couple different ways that you could do this. Um, I found that it was uh, rather challenging. It fits very, very tightly. You know, you think you might be able to just flip this upside down and push it right down onto the primer, but uh, very difficult to get them in that way. Uh, what I found worked best was to take some sort of a little piece of metal. I've just got a block of aluminum right here. Set the primer on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dowel. In this case, it's 5 eighths to go inside my 20 gauge shell. I actually even uh, cut a little bit out of the middle with a drill bit right there so it avoids the, the hump uh, from where the primer goes in. Just put the dowel in there. Line this up over the top. Now keep in mind this is a primer. It's designed to be hit by uh, a hammer and fire when in the gun and of course we don't want that to happen. Um, I did not have any issues with this. You just line it up right over the top and now all the pressure is going into just pushing it in. Uh, you're way out on the edges of the primer, um, not anywhere where you're going to fire it. Still, you want to be wearing safety glasses and I'm going to have my hand away from the shell and then just uh, take a little whack at it here with a mallet. And you can see here what happens is that that primer is pushed into flush. That is exactly what you want. When you look at it from the side, nice and flush. So now we need to measure our powder and get it down into that shell. Uh, so we're going to need some way to uh, weigh that powder. We're going to need some way to get it in. So we certainly could use a small funnel like this uh, to get it in. But we need to know exactly how much powder we're putting in there. I've got a little scale right here. And this came with a kind of a little plastic cup. And so we can use the scale. Uh, we can kick it over to measure grains, which is a very uh, small unit of weight. Just hit the mode button a couple of times here. And then what we could actually do is just spoon little bits of powder in here at a time until we get to, I decided on using 70 grains. That was a number that came up a number of times from uh, cowboy action shooting and some other uh, information sources that I was watching. Now, another way of doing this is with a old fashioned powder measure. And that's actually what I ended up doing primarily with this. Uh, there's a set screw here. And then you can slide this adjustable plunger in and out to vary how much powder is in here. Uh, this was in with my dad's reloading supplies. Uh, so I used it and I just set it to 70 grains of powder. And then along with that was a powder flask. So this is, um, it's almost like an hourglass with a spring-loaded opening device right here. So basically you hold it upright, you press the button, and powder flows out through here. So let's just do this. Got this set to 70 grains. Just put this in here, press the button. It fills up. Pull this back out. And the other thing that's nice about this powder measure here is that it fits right into our brass shot shell. Just make sure all the powder has come out. So whether you use a little brass measure like this, um, a scoop from a little scale, doesn't matter. But the important part is you get the right amount of powder in there. Now the next thing is that we're going to need some sort of a wad. So again, in with uh, my dad's black powder shooting supplies, we've got some wads here that they're basically they're cardboard. There's two different types. There's a thicker one and a thinner one. And these are designed for 20 gauge. Now, let's just take a look at these from an open package. Essentially, this one is just tag board. It's not very thick at all, but it's the right size for 20 gauge. Uh, this is thicker. And this is really designed to go over the powder before the shot. And it, uh, it, it 
essentially pushes the shot out and it absorbs the shock. Now we don't necessarily need this because with the ash, we're not pushing as much weight out of the barrel. And let me show you something else quick here. Here is a key difference between the plastic shells and the brass shells. And the thing is, they actually have different interior diameters. Uh, the reason why is just that the brass is thinner than the plastic. So you actually need a slightly larger wad for the brass shell than the plastic one. Uh, just for example, if I take this and I go to push it in here, it, boy, that it really fits just about perfect. It's super snug, fits right in there. Um, another way I can show you the same thing here too, maybe a little easier is with the dowel. So this is my 5 8 dowel. It fits exactly, exactly in here, whereas it's gonna be uh, a little loose on the brass. So what I did is I consulted a chart. Take a look at the, uh, the description in the video. I'll have a link to this. Um, I found a chart that says what size you need for wads for brass shotgun shells. So right here I got some information. And basically for a 20 gauge, of the Magtech brass shells, I don't need a 20 gauge, I need 18 or 17. Uh, so these are gonna be a little bit bigger diameter. Now you can mail order these, um, but I didn't want a huge bag full of them. And you know, I, I only needed a few. So what I actually ended up doing was I have a CNC paper cutter and I used it to cut some wads literally out of a piece of cereal box. So I just told the computer these exact diameters that I wanted and cut them out. Uh, it's really a very handy machine. Um, I've used it a lot for car graphics and things like that. Um, and you don't need fancy expensive materials. This is literally uh, a cereal box and this cardstock is really uh, a pretty good size for this right here. So I've got my cereal box cardstock that we're gonna use as a wad. So we're just gonna take one of these, put it into our shotgun shell, and then push it down. And what we're gonna do is just push down enough that we're compacting that powder a little bit. Uh, so the powder is squished down, it's held in place, it's not falling out, it's not shaking around or going anywhere. So those are our homemade cardboard wads right here. Now, if you are using uh, just a plastic shot shell, um, it's easier because uh, basically it's a 5 8 of an inch for a 20 gauge and 3 quarters of an inch for a 12 gauge. Um, I've seen people go to craft stores and get 5 8 or 3 quarter inch circular hole punches and literally just uh, using a hole punch on a material like this, pop, 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 pop them out. Uh, also, you could use something along the lines of a leather punch and just punch that right through some cardstock as well. I didn't have either of those and I had that CNC paper cutter handy, so I thought, why not? I'd give it a shot. I also did some experimenting um, just using some various uh, cardstocks uh, just to make sure that I'd get the right size. So now for the part you've all been waiting for. And first of all, no, that is not human remains. That is ashes from my fireplace. Uh, what I did is I wanted to make sure this would all work before I loaded actual human remains. So I have a fireplace. I just grabbed some ash from my fireplace. I burn pretty much anything in there. So there's a lot of just kind of weird stuff in this ash. Uh, which brings up another very important point. Uh, you have to keep in mind that ash uh, from cremation is almost sort of a euphemism. Uh, human beings are not a piece of firewood. Uh, when human remains are burned at a very high temperature, basically all that's remaining is the bones. And then the bones are ground up to become what we call ash. Um, but it, it's really not ash. It's really essentially bone powder. And so it is going to be heavier than fireplace ash. It's a little bit more like uh, fine grained beach sand. So although I'm using fireplace ash here, it's not an exact substitute for cremation ashes. Cremation ashes are going to be heavier 
denser and grittier. And you can see, even in this fireplace ash, I've got a whole bunch of kind of different sized pieces in here. What you probably want to do uh, with the cremated remains is no joke, you want to sift them. And that'll give you an even consistency and be something much better for loading. So let's just, as an example, use this fireplace ash. All I'm going to do is grab a funnel, grab about a, a spoonful of the ash. Now I know from loading these already that for actual human remains, it takes about a teaspoonful essentially. Um, anything that doesn't fall through, I'm just gonna shake around until it does go in there. Maybe we get a little closer here so you can see that a little better. So we've got some of the ashes in there. Now, especially with the fireplace ash, it's gonna be kind of light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use that dowel again. This end is square cut and I'm just gonna push that down just to squish it down in place. And you'll notice here, actually a little tiny bit of the ash came flying out. So for doing this for actual human remains, what I highly recommend is to do it over something where it doesn't matter if any of the ash comes out. So for example, just a, like a, a cardboard tray like this. Uh, I'm not using this just because it's easier to see everything, but when I actually did the cremation remains, I did use a box like this with the idea that any of the ash that fell out I'd be able to pour back into one of the shells and even any of the ash that I missed, the little bit that was left in there, uh, I'd be able to simply burn the box. So for example, with us, we traditionally do a big bonfire in the fall and I can burn that cardboard box at our bonfire on our family property. So without spilling ash all over the place, uh, I compacted that down and now I can add some more ash and I'm gonna do that two or three or four times, however time, however many times that I need to, to get the ash down in here. You could also use a device to just kind of poke it down in there. Again, squish it down in place, compact it. And however many times you need to do this. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna not quite fill it all the way up. We're starting to get full, but if I compact this down, you'll see how much extra room that we have. Uh, boy, I see that compacted down to about half its size. So I'm just gonna keep filling this. And keep in mind, human ash is less compactable than this uh, fireplace wood ash. So we want the ash in there compacted and going most of the way to the top, not quite all the way to the end. In fact, I could probably put just a little bit more in here. Uh, now on our little practice round here, I did make a little bit of a mess with the ash. Um, obviously that's one good reason why it would be contained on a, a tray or a box, something along those lines. Also, I started here with uh, some of the ash just on this piece of tag board. Now, when you actually get ash from the funeral home, from the crematorium, uh, most likely it's, it's going to be uh, not a small amount, uh, almost like a, a coffee can sized amount. Uh, I recommend taking some of it and sifting it. Uh, my brother-in-law did that for us. And then what I did was I got a jar that was full uh, about that high with the ashes. And that was enough for uh, a 15 or 16, 20 gauge rounds. So now we have our shell with our primer in it. We loaded in our black powder, or in this case, Pirate X, a wad. We compressed in the ash, you can see right here, the ash is actually in there compressed solidly enough that right now it's not gonna fall out. But we need to put a wad over the top of that. And all this has to be is just, again, another one of those little pieces of cardboard. Uh, before actually putting that in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it to make it very, very obvious what's in here. Uh, typical of home loaders, they might put like the 
uh, the size of the shot that they're using on here or the number of grains of powder. In this case, what I would do is I'd put the initials of the dearly, dearly departed on here. So let's just say we mark this with our initials and a marker. And we need a way for this wad to stay in there as well. So we're just gonna push this in. And if it's pressed in neatly and it's the correct size, it shouldn't fall out, but we still wanna seal that in there. Uh, of all the different videos that I watched for cowboy action shooting and brass shell reloading, uh, there were a number of different ways to seal these up. Uh, one that was kind of old fashioned is to use some wax. You can take some wax and melt it. This was actually in with my father's reloading supplies already in a little tin and I could just put that over a, a candle or a lighter and very quickly some of this beeswax will melt. I could make a little spout in the aluminum here and then just actually pour that directly into the end. Now a couple of things with that. First of all you're dealing with an open flame uh, near gunpowder so there's that concern. Uh, the other thing is wax gets really sticky and messy very quickly, so you have to be a little bit careful with that. What I found worked out really well, even though it's not nearly as old-timey, was, believe it or not, just good old plain Elmer's school glue, uh, just some white glue. What's nice about this is that it dries clear. So with the tip here, all we have to do is just run a real nice thin bead of glue around the inside. Uh, less is better. So we'll just get the tip in there, a gentle squeeze, and spin our shell. You don't need much at all. Uh, in fact, that was uh, probably more than what was needed right there. Uh, but just give it a little while to dry, and it will dry clear and look very, very nice, and uh, you'll be able to easily read those initials. Now, if you were using, uh, instead of brass shotgun shells, if you were using uh, the plastic ones, uh, you would reload them just like how you would any, any typical plastic shell, uh, except here we've got a shot cup. Uh, we would put that in there and load that up with the ashes. Um, of course, that's plastic. That's going to come flying out of the barrel. You're probably trying to spread these ashes in some beautiful, pristine location. I'm against littering. This is non-biodegradable, whereas just these plain pieces of cardstock, uh, those will compost themselves. Those will disappear in not too long. So loading these brass shotgun shells was not rocket science, but it is science. You do need to uh, use the correct amount of powder, have it compressed down, uh, make sure that you're doing it right. So I do highly recommend that you uh, look up information and watch videos about uh, home loading in general to make sure that uh, you're, you're comfortable with what's going on and that you're going to make a safe load. Uh, I also did test out those uh, fireplace ash rounds at a local firing range and they worked exactly as I hoped they would. It made a nice plume of ash and smoke. Now with the uh, actual cremation remains you'll get that same amount of smoke but you might not have the ash hang in the air as much just because the cremation ash uh, tends to be heavier than what fireplace ash is. I hope you found this information useful. I, I know this is a really a kind of a, a strange subject. Uh, I know I never imagined I'd be firing somebody's ashes out of shotgun shells, but it, it certainly made for a memorable event and I'm glad that I did it. And for whoever you're now missing in your life, um, I hope that this is something that uh, starts healing and makes it a great way to remember that very special person in your life. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take care, be well, and God bless.